Sorry, trying to get organized here. What's up, Amazed? What's up, Beast? Guys, we're going to talk about the most important thing. Psychic thickness. <laughs> I don't even know if I got that right, but that just made me laugh. I don't even know why. I don't even know why. Look what I have pre-recorded now for new followers. Ready? I'll do this. Or this. But then this. Welcome to the Street Talk Reader Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. <laughs> Amazed. Thank you for the host. I appreciate that very much. I don't know if it just sounds because I, I end up saying that. I have to interrupt my game, but now I can just go. Welcome to the Street Talk Reader Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. What's up, Burke? Guys, we're going to talk about the most important thing. We're also going to start. Guys, look what we can do. We're going to be doing predictions. <clears throat> or oh, I forgot to choose the outcome. Yes. What's up, Jewy? Yep, you can ask me anything. Because we haven't even started a topic yet, so it's pretty wide open. I'm not saying I'll answer everything, but you can ask away. Absolutely. What's up? I'm ready. I'm ready for the question. <clears throat> no, but it's cool. It's physical thickness. Oh, I see it now. Basically, sure. I got it. Okay. Okay. I see it. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not even close to psychic thickness. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's up, Moonflow? Physical thickness. I got it. Muscles. How do you get a lot of views and followers on Twitch? That is not a, that's a long question with a bunch of content I've been putting out for weeks and months. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about one of the most important ways today. So the subject for today's street talk is going to be the most important thing. So we're going to give people a, a chance to get here for a couple of minutes, and uh, and then we're going to get into it. Look at that. 1K points went to Filthy. You see that? Can Street get 300 kills in zombies? I actually got like 800. <clears throat> we played a crazy long game. Okay, so we're going to start doing these in meetings all day. All right, listen, we're going to start doing it, but I'm still glad you're here, man. Appreciate the support, brother. Okay, we're going to do, I'm going to put up a prediction. So predictions are a new thing that half of the affiliates and partners had, re excuse me, got released yesterday. There are ways you can use your channel points in wagering. What's up, Decent Gamer? Kind of a thing. Long time no see. <clears throat> I still don't see you. You just get to see me. That's like my that's like my Cold War zombie voice, right? Insta kill. <laughs> Fragile privacy, what's going on? What's going on? I'm gonna put up a prediction. You guys can see how it works. Here we go. Here's what it's gonna be. I'm going to start a new prediction. <clears throat> Whoops. And the question is going to be, what is the most, the most important thing in, I don't know how, I, well, it's going to be relative to this. I can't, I don't want to put like a really... What's the most important thing? So answer number one is going to be this is going to be ready. Okay. You're going to have two minutes to wager your channel points. You're going to have, I can't do ball slams anymore. I'm breaking the floor. It has to be like deadlifts now. Okay, so here's what a prediction is. 
You or your mods can let viewers cast their prediction, and those who choose the correct outcome can win channel points. All predictions must follow their terms of service, whatever. Okay, here we go. You ready? I'm putting the prediction out. At the t If you're on mobile, you're not going to be able to see it, apparently. So you have to be on browser. Or if you're, like, on the mobile app, I think you can only see it, like, on the browser, maybe on your phone. I haven't really tested it. I'm just going by what people told me. But here's how you can use your points. You ready? So I'm putting out a prediction. <clears throat> and it's really a question. You guys can, here's that, look, here we go. It's up. Here's the prediction at the top of the chat. So you can win channel points. Okay. Let's see if it shows up. It should say, what is the most important thing? I don't know why it doesn't show the whole thing. And then it gives you two answers. So, like, if I click on it, it brings up, what is the most important thing? The grind or branding? And then you can wager whatever points. Does that make sense? You want, and if you win... At your, at your desk. I don't know. Maybe if you bring up the browser version of it, I don't know. I don't know if that does it. I'm actually not sure. Doesn't work in Sweden. Why would it not work in Sweden? Are you on Inc? Are you on mobile or are you on like a, a browser, a PC? I don't know why. I, this is new. This is brand new. It's a soft rollout by Twitch. 50% of the affiliates and partners got it. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe there's like Swedish law or something against it. I don't know. It's really That's really odd. You can do it on mobile? Okay. Like the actual mobile app? People are doing it. It's too new to be open in Sweden. That could be, I guess. They could have rolled it out just in the U.S. or something. That makes sense. Because it is a soft rollout. They said it's a soft rollout. Sweden is so slow. Sweden is awesome. Okay. So. Is it over? Is it over? Okay. Let me see, because now I can choose I can choose the prediction outcome. All right, four people said branding, one person said the grind. Let's choose the outcome. You ready? We'll do more throughout the stream. So 6K points went to you guys. 57.20 go to Raven, 7.15 and three other. Oh, yeah. So you guys now got to split up 5,720 channel points. I don't know how many you bet. This is all, all kind of new. We'll do some more. Is that kind of cool? Kind of use that throughout the stream. You guys like that? You like this prediction thing? Another way to use your channel points? What do you think? Oh, grumpy. I can't do ball slams. I'm breaking the floor. I will do I will do deadlifts though. How's that? I'll do 10 deadlifts. Hold on. Oh, it's going to make me maybe at five just to give people some extra points. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, I just had a giant 
like I have my morning like power shake. Ugh. Woo. Yeah, that's true. I like that. That's true, Jack. Um, guys, we have so much going on behind the scenes. There's so much going on. Today in particular, I want to talk about. I want to see something here really quick. Why? I want to talk about um, the most important thing in growing. I don't care if it's growing on Twitch, if it's growing as a broadcaster, if it's growing as a video producer, if it's growing as a player. It's, I don't care. I don't care. The most important thing is branding. Branding. And we're going to talk about it in a little bit different way than you might expect. Okay? What's up, Savannah? Um, we're going to talk about it. Branding. I'm not the only one that says this, but I'm going to be the one that says it today on Street Talk. Branding is the most important thing businesses, and I'm going to add personalities and people can do in the next 10 years for a lot of reasons, but we're going to break it down. I put a TikTok out this morning that kind of addressed this as well. And so the way that I'm going to approach this today, the way that I'm going to approach this today is this. Are you ready? What's up, King? Here we go. Now, it's going to seem really simple, but we're going to break each piece of it down in detail. There's a lot of detail that goes into this, okay? And then you guys need to be putting out your questions. Here we go. Personal branding. Branding is a business, but we're going to talk about personal branding in the world of esports because if you're a streamer, player, coach, broadcaster, video, if you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, to me, it doesn't matter. Branding yourself is massively important. The most important thing to lead the way of your work, your schedule, you know, grinding it out, all the other things. Ready? Here we go. Your personal brand is made up of three things. And I call them the three U's. Y-O-U. The three U's. <clears throat> Sorry, if you hear me, if you see me coughing, <laughs> I, 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 I had, took a big swig of my shake. My power shake this morning, it went down the wrong tube. I'm still suffering. What's up, Nexakilla? Okay, the three U's. The three U's. U number one, and then we're going to break them down. We're going to break them down. Ready? Okay, so Nexakilla, I'm going to try this. Ready? Hey, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the Street Talk Leader Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. Look, that was the first time I pre-recorded it last night. <laughs> so I don't have to interrupt. But I kind of just did interrupt. I've got to kind of let it play anyway. But at least now I can still be playing a game if someone does it during the game. And I don't have to push the button and keep holding it as I talk or whatever. Anyway, thank you for the fall. I appreciate it. Okay. The three U's. Y-O-U's. Number one. All right, Rye, you lurk away. Number one. Number one is the U that you – oh, Medic's back again with five gifted. What? Medic, you got to give this guy some love, man. He's such a great guy. I've been on his stream. He's got you got to check out his stream. He streams at night. Give him some love, and he's been he's been super supportive, man. Brother, thank you so much. He's grinding it out as well. Um, hit fifty now. I need to average three. Awesome, awesome killer. You're gonna get there, brother. You're gonna get there. Medic, thank you so much, my friend. So much. I appreciate the love. Guys, give him some give him some love back for the people that all just got five gifted subs. Okay. So the three U's in personal branding. Branding is the number one thing you have to do in growing. People are asking, how do I grow on Twitch? How do I grow here? How do I do this? How do I get a job? You've got a personal brand today. You've got to brand yourself. Here's what I and here's and we're gonna break this down in such detail, guys. That it's going to be, you're going to need to watch this video probably five times to get all the detail. I'm going to try to talk fast. We're going to try to answer questions. There's a lot about this subject. Number So there are three U's, three Y-O-U's. Number one, take notes. Number one, is the U that you work really hard to put out to the world, how you envision you want to be seen by the world. We're going to break these down in detail. So... You, number one, is how you 
portray yourself to the world. That's you number one. You number two is how the world interprets that presentation. How the world interprets from their perspective that presentation you put out. Okay? That's you number two. You number three is the real you. It's somewhere in the middle. And the most important one to focus on while understanding the power of the other two is the real you. Now that sounds like, yeah, 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 be authentic. and all. We're going to talk about it in detail. The real you is the one that, that makes human connection. It's the most compelling and it's the longest lasting. It's the longest lasting. Now, I know people are talking about, well, what about people like Dr. Disrespect that have a persona? It's not the real him. There's, listen, we're going to talk about all of that, okay? We're going to talk about all of that. All right, now, I want to make sure I'm not missing stuff along the way. Okay, so you have the you that you present to the world, the, the you that the world sees and, and from their perspective and interprets as to what that is, and then you have the real you. Let's get into the first one. Let's get into the first one. The you that you put out to the world, what does that mean? That means everything that you do say, wear, man, it, everything from how you comb your hair or don't comb your hair or if you don't have hair to what you wear, to what you drive, to where you live, to where you work, to the things you say, to the things that you show people that you read, anything that demonstrates some measure, you know, my wife told me she was watching a show um, like uh, I don't even know what it was. It was a real estate show or something, some reality thing. It was interesting. She thought about how they went through the process. And this family said they wanted a house that when you walked up was stately. OK, no judgment on what that means or if that's good or bad. But that statement of wanting a home that makes a state that is stately, whatever that means for them, is a representation of how they want the world to see them, where they live, how they live, whatever the location is. Again, not a judgment of good or bad or anything. Let's just break it down in facts, okay? That person wants to walk to their home every every or drive up to their home and they come home whatever and feel like well I'm coming to, and they also want other people to come up and see or have a feeling if they don't recognize it wow they live in a stately home it rep, it's a representation of whatever it is that person that owns a home wants to be out there i'm successful i'm stately i'm prestigious i'm you know i'm formal whatever it doesn't and again it doesn't matter it, there's we the things we drive why do, why do most people, just as an example, why do most people drive the car they drive? Some people don't give a rip about cars, but why do luxury brand cars exist? Especially today. I'm just So again, not a judgment here at all. If someone drives a Lexus, a BMW, a Mercedes, it's not often because they believe that it's an incredibly amazing piece of auto mechan or auto, automobile engineering and it's i mean it, it is in many cases don't get me wrong but most people i believe want to present success and that's oftentimes why they drive a luxury brand because you could take if, if toyota makes lexus the toyota camry is an amazingly solid car an incredible value but it doesn't carry any prestige right so if now if someone drives, for example, I could give you an example. And, and again, it's not it's not a judgment of someone's reasoning. I'm just stating a fact that we make massive, massive effort to present ourselves to the world, in most cases, people in general, in some way. Now, if I say to you, I'm picking on cars, if I say to you, um, someone that drives a Subaru, what do we typically know? Subarus are typically, all right, Panda, you need to watch it. Have a great day, Puffy. If someone drives a Subaru, I typically think probably environmentally conscious or someone that drives a hybrid, you know, maybe they're environmentally conscious or, you know, you know, you, see, you know what I'm saying? We could come up with all kinds of things. Someone that wears um, bougie clothing, 
name brand clothing and spends a fortune on it and they're very into fashion. That's a statement. Doesn't always mean, look at me, I'm successful. It just may means they love fashion and they love all of that. Someone that wears um, cowboy boots and, and Wrangler jeans and a hat and all of that, it's a representation of their values of who they are or how they want to be seen. You understand what I'm saying? What's difficult about this process is that oftentimes how we want to be portrayed is fluid and based on how we view society or how we view what society values at that given time. And we tend to we tend to roll with what's popular because we like to be popular. Okay? Is this making sense to anyone so far? You guys with me? The you that you present in your personal branding, you put a lot of thought into it. Even if you don't think that you do. Even if you don't think that you do, you're putting thought into it. Okay? Again, the places you go to eat, the the people you hang out with, the things that you uh, wear, the things that you buy, the places that you live, in some form, there's a process of it representing who you are, or who you want to be seen as in the eyes of the world. We all do it, every one of us, okay? Before we move to the second one, I want you to understand that it's important that we do that, okay? To a degree. And there's a right way and a wrong way, and we'll get into more details about that. Okay, let's get to the next one, number two. So in your personal branding development, the three U's, if you're just coming in, I want you to be caught up. Number one, the, the, the you that you portray to the world. Number two, the, this we're going to talk about now, the way the world interprets that presentation you put out. And then number three, we're going to talk about the real you. All right, Puffy. I'm glad you're lurking. But listen closely. <laughs> okay. Now. The way the world interprets, this is a really, really, really tricky one. And oftentimes, this is the battle. This is the battle of of us trying to constantly adjust how the world sees us by what we put out there. But the world doesn't understand always our reasoning of why we put ourselves out there. It simply makes an immediate assessment and interpretation. For example, if someone walks into um, a restaurant and you're sitting there with your significant other, family, friends, whatever, and this person comes in and they have a big, long, scraggly beard and a leather vest and tattoos all over, and they clearly rode up on a motorcycle, it doesn't matter the reasoning. That person could be a white-collar executive during the day and enjoys the culture of motorcycles and that kind of thing at night. But your immediate impression, interpretation is biker, dangerous, scary, whatever. I mean, I love whatever, whatever it is for you, there's an interpretation without understanding who's really behind it. Shelby Jewel, Shelby. Hold on, ready? Thank you for the follow. Ready? Welcome to the Street Talk Leader Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. I don't know if the recorded thing is going to work or not. I always ask people, I'm, I don't know, Shelby Jewel, I don't know if you're a, a Shelby Cobra lover or if you're, you're a female that has the name Shelby. And oftentimes when I meet, because I love, I was a big Shelby, Shelby Cobra, big Shelby guy uh, growing up as a kid. I always wanted to name one of my girls Shelby. My wife wouldn't let me do it. So people always, it, like, if I, when I see girls who are named Shelby, I always wonder, did your dad love Shelby's or did your mom love, um, is it fried green tomatoes? I don't remember. I love the name Shelby, though. Anyway, thanks for the follow. Okay. So the you, the way the world interprets the you that you put out there is, uh, is, is important to understand because, number one, you can't control it. You really can't control it. Because someone looks at you and the presentation you put out in, in, in your branding efforts or, or, you know, the first you, the, the way you want to be seen, you can't control how they interpret that. Because their perspective, life experience, associations, all of those kinds of things 
are fully them. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. What's up, Riven? You better be here by noon. That's all I have to say. <laughs> okay. So the way that people view this, so that's the second you. It's the way the world looks at the presentation that you put out and try to put out. And again, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to adjust that. What happens, however, is that we try to. We try. We're endlessly trying to have the world see us a certain way. And to some degree, some people way more than others. Other people, even though they feel like they don't give a rip, very few people are true sociopaths or isolationists or people that you know really don't. That, that's really rare. Most of us are, are kind of in the middle ground of that. Because we like our, our ego, we all have an ego to a certain degree. We like to feel better about ourselves. We like to have people, um, you know, tell us, you know, that that we look nice or or that hey, you know, wow, look at the car you drive. We all like it. The problem is it doesn't bring lasting connection, and that's the third you we're going to talk about. Uh, nope, grew up in a Chevy house, but Steel Magnolias movie was a huge in the same. <laughs> I kind of figured. I kind of. I kind of figured. I love the name Shelby, though. I'm assuming that's your name. If it's not, I still love it. Um, and it's unfortunate you grew up in a Chevy house. I'm sorry for you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't leave. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Let's talk about the third you. Again, first you is the you that you build and present and try to put out to the world, right? The second you is the way the world sees that. The third you is the hardest to hide, the most important to reveal, but the most vulnerability associated with all three of them, right? Ouch, my Chevy just caught fire. (laughs) Okay. Now, this third you, the real you, is very interesting because... Anytime you make a connection with someone, it goes deeper than the first two yous. It goes deeper. You may have an attraction because, oh, I like that young lady because of the way she dresses. Oh, that young man, the car he drives, or that person in the house they live in or the job they have or whatever. There's something that you can identify as perhaps common ground. But the more you get to know the, the real person in there, the stronger the connection. Does that make sense? It's the people we spend the most time with that we tend to be closest to because we delve deeper into the who, to who they are. And as long as they're, they're, they're within our, our world of you know values and, and principles and all of that, we make very deep, lasting, strong connections. So this one, the real you, is the hardest, though. It lurks in between the you you present, the you that the world interprets. It's there. Now, before we get too too deep into that, uh, found me on TikTok, been struggling, but your content sounds like you can help. Yes, it's going to help. Make sure you stay plugged in. We got a lot of stuff coming up, guys. A lot of stuff coming up. Okay, now. This real you, when it comes to branding, because people are going to say things like, well, as a streamer, and again, we're only talking about one, I'm talking about streamers right now. Um, yes, thank you. Please, I appreciate that, Jack. Jack is so amazing. One of my favorite couples in the entire world. Not to mention, by the way, guys, Jack is my director of program development. He's been with me. He was the first person outside of the inner circle that I had with this concept of Delta V. Um, anyway, he's he's the man, and he's just an amazing, great guy. I'm not going to brag about him for Okay, let's go back, because I'm getting to know the real him over a couple of years. <laughs> okay, now, and his wife's even more amazing. Okay, this real you, people are going to say things like, okay, well, let's talk about streamers, and let's look at Dr. Disrespect. Okay, Dr. Disrespect is a persona. His outfit, mustache, glasses, all of that. But here's what I would say. He's not trying to say that that's who he is. It's something that's iconic that people can attach themselves to. It's a branding tactic. 
it's a marketing marketing and branding are two different things so let me just stick with branding um it's a branding tactic and it works for him and it works for a lot of people it works for a lot of people okay but understand that it's a specific thought out tactic even if it didn't completely start that way he began to realize that he was getting, you know, that he got traction or some version of it. Next thing you know, it just became what the audience expected. And we're going to talk about this stuff in your branding as well. We're going to get deep into this um, side of it. Okay. So we have the you that you put out to the world. We have the you that the world interprets that as being. And we have the real you mixed with, you know, things like, do I want to be a persona? How does it apply to branding? And let's break down every piece of it. Okay, there's a difference. It is important for you to portray to the world to some degree what your values are, what things you do, why you're good at them, because we care as outsiders. We always want to make first impressions and first impressions are important and yes they are lasting and it does make an, a, a huge difference now when you think about first impressions and why they're so powerful even before the digital world first impressions lasted this long and if it didn't work if it wasn't something that, that caught the attention with a sense of, I want to know more about that person, then you've lost it. You've lost that person or that, that. let me give you an example. Um, if, if, if Tyler Blevins Ninja showed up at an event with his blue hair and his bent, whatever, it stands out, a lot of people have blue hair, but there's something about it that says, okay, why is this person have why does this person have blue hair? Now, there's a phase 2 to that in being what do you do to keep their attention? But let me go back to this premise of why branding is so important. Because remember, the commodity that we exchange in today's digital world is attention. Attention. And so that first impression that you make in front of someone whether you're applying for a job as a broadcaster or you are you, you're a streamer with someone's audience, you know, or whether you're a player going up on stage, or a coach wanting to work with your players, and you're the new coach. You're gonna have that. You're gonna have what you bring in, this you that you want to present, and it's and it's got to be something as that second you interprets what that is. That gets their attention. Do you understand the importance of these two roles? They're not going to go away. I'm not saying don't ever dress the way you want or, you know, but understand that everything that you present is going to be interpreted and not always the right way, not always the way you want, but in whatever you do, there is an ability to gain attention. That's what brand now, now we're going to get into the deep side of branding. You have their attention by what you presented. Their interpretation is either going to do one of two things. I don't care. And they're going to leave or who is this person? I want to know more. Now we get into brand. So the ability to get to know the third you, the real you, the authentic you, is the ability to, to get people to continue to return for some reason. Put something out, got their attention, now how do you hold it? And that's brand. You build something that people can associate with in your personal brand that keeps them coming back or wanting more. Um, so understand how critical it is to have a brand. Okay. Now let me make sure I'm not uh, missing anything here. Okay. A brand is something, let's just talk about brands in general, okay? Let's talk about brands in general. A brand is something that you can count on to be what you need it or want it to be every time you engage with it. 
So if Dr. Disrespect, as, as an easy example, showed up one day without his wig, without his glasses, with, you know, wearing blue instead of black and red, what was the result of the poll? Which, oh, the poll. I, I, I need to do another one, don't I? Um, we would be confused. And if he kept doing it, he would lose people because the expectation would be different. You understand what I'm saying? But instead, we go there every time knowing what we're going to get, and we like it. We like it. It can't be the same thing every time, but the brand can rep, because the brand is what people associate with. Let me give you a deeper example. Maybe let's see if we can do this as a prediction. Let me do this as a prediction. Uh, we're going to start a new one. So here's the new prediction. Um, let's let's do it this way. Um, okay. Biggest brand. Biggest brand. Globally. Okay, and I'm going to put in two. I'm going to say. Or, okay, I'm going to put this up. You have one minute. Here goes the prediction. This will move us into our next segment. You can use your channel points if you don't know what this is, okay? And if you win, you can win channel points. So the question is, if you look at the prediction, for those of you that can't, I know some are, I mean, whatever can't. Biggest brand globally. Biggest brand globally. Oreo or Coca-Cola? Biggest brand globally. You have one minute to bet your channel points and see what the answer is. Maybe you can, you can, you can earn some extra channel points. Okay? Biggest brand globally. Time is ticking down. You have 16 seconds remaining. You have 10 seconds. Get your, get your vote in. And the result of the first one, Grumpy, is that branding is the most important thing. Okay. Wow. No one voted for Oreo. So you guys are right. It is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is the biggest brand in the world. Okay. What does that mean? The biggest brand in the world. What does it mean to be a big brand? Well, it means that you have an expectation of a result in exchange for your money or time or experience, whatever, your attention. You have, an, you have an expectation, okay? I could say the same thing about, you know, here, let, let me shift it into another gear. There's a difference. There's a difference to brand identity and brand. Now, let me back up. There's a difference between brand recognition and brand identity. Okay, we're getting deep. I told you there's going to be a lot of detail. You're going to want to watch this, this, uh, this video like, like four times, okay? Brand recognition means that anyone can see it and they say, oh, yeah, that's UPS. I see the brown truck. Oh, yeah, that's Target. I know that, you know, the red and white colors are Target. That's brand recognition, and that's very valuable because you've established yourself as a re as a as a individual company, whatever it is, as something that people have a respect for or a willingness to spend their money with, or you've got their attention and you've been able to keep it, and people come back. It's what uh, Jean Paul of um <laughs> of uh, uh, Paul Mitchell said. You know, in building a company and building a, a you know a business. You want a business that has recurring purchases, people that come back to it, not one time. And that's very significant. That's what a brand recognition does. I know I can go to Target, McDonald's, in it, whatever it is, and have an experience. Now, that's brand recognition. Let me answer. So hold on a second. How do I do? I I'm going to do another prediction. Let's try another one. Do you guys like these predictions, by the way? Which has 
more power, okay? And it, is it is it brand recognition or brand identity? Ooh. All right, you got one minute. Brand recognition, brand recognition, or brand identity. Which is it? You have 45 seconds. Which has more power, brand recognition or brand identity? Some people are going to run out of channel points pretty quick. Probably going to get a DMCA violation for using that sound. I don't even know where it comes from, but it's recorded. I have it on my thing. Okay, you got, you've got you got 12 seconds. Which has more power, brand recognition or brand identity? Three, two, one. Okay. Man, you guys are good. Yes. It is absolutely brand identity. Here's what I mean by that. I've talked about Target, McDonald's, Oreo, Coca-Cola, whatnot, but let me tell you something about this next brand that's different. And tell me if you can let you can help me understand what's different about it. Ready? Here's the brand. Harley Davidson. What's different about it? What's different about it? Harley Davidson. Why is it why do I, I why do I put that as brand identity? <laughs> Your channel points aren't going up. <laughs> Cuz everyone's no one's losing. I got to ask harder questions so someone loses their channel points. Why is Harley Davidson different as a brand? And how does it apply to identity versus recognition? Okay? You're on the right track. It's associated with a lifestyle. Go further. They sell experiences. Yep, keep going. It's an image. Yep, but a lot of things are an image. You're right. But it does create a very distinct image, okay? You guys are you guys are all going the right direction. Here's what Harley Davidson is. It's like buying a vet. It is kind of. It is it is kind of. It does portray something about you. Here's what's very unique. Here's what's very unique about it. You ready? How many people have you ever seen walk around anywhere in your life with a McDonald's tattoo? (laughs) Or a Target tattoo? Ever seen it? I've never seen it. Not saying it doesn't exist. (laughs) You do not have one. I've never seen one. But I see Harley Davidson tattoos all the time. You understand the difference? It becomes more than just, it's like it's like in the CrossFit world. And yes, it is a community. It's like in the CrossFit world. When I would, when you know, people, people got, so for the 10 years I was deeply immersed in there, people don't say, I do CrossFit. They say, I'm a CrossFitter. You see the difference? It becomes part of their, their identity. And that's what I mean when I say brand identification. It becomes part of a person's identity. You don't ride Harley Davidson's. You're a Harley rider. You don't drive a Chevy. I'm a Chevy guy. I'm a Chevy gal. You see what I'm saying? There's more than just a recognition of the brand. There is a deep tie and connection to the brand. And that's very different. That's very different. So when we create the Street Taco Eater Nation, that's a community with a purpose that is a purpose that you can identify with, hopefully, and you become very connected to. And it becomes part of your identity. I am Sten. I don't want you, don't, don't, don't tattoo that on you, okay? We have new branding coming out. Please don't tattoo my face on your, <laughs> on your body. <laughs> okay. But there's a significant difference, okay? It's magic. 
You know, people don't use Apple products. They're Apple. You, you know, I, I'm an Apple guy. You see what I'm saying? There's deep emotions tied to the whole situation. And that's what that's what the power of branding is. Okay? When someone says, um, you know, let's say the number one rated League of Legends player in the world, I think still is Faker, right? And so people will show up wearing a Faker jersey at an event when we could have events, and they would say, "Yeah, I'm I'm a Faker guy." I don't even know what Laney plays. I don't even. But anyway, I think he's I think he's mid. If I don't remember. Anyway, I'm I'm a you know I play mid. I'm a Faker style player. I, I mean, right? It's it's a it's a personal association and identity. It's part of who you are. That's a power in brand. That's something that never goes away. And it takes a really, really long time to build, okay? Now, let's talk about the work it takes and some of the details of how you get there. Does this make sense so far? The three U's, the importance of, of branding, the difference between recognition and identity, and now we're going to talk about how the real you or, or the work that goes into it. We know we put work out. This is what I, who I want you to see me as. The world says, this is who we see you as. And then somewhere in the middle is the real one, which is the one that makes deep connection, which either turns into recognition, but hopefully over time, identity. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense so far? Because now we're going to get into some detailed work stuff. Yes? Or does anyone have, does anyone have questions up to this point? Because we're going to get into some nitty gritty. Does anyone have questions up to this point? Questions about what we've talked about. Max Ammo. <laughs> What's up, Heptic? Okay. If you don't have any questions, let's get into some details nitty gritty then. How do you create a brand? How do you do it? How do you create a brand? Thoughts? I'll do another I'll do another prediction. How is a brand created? It just happens over time or it's calculated every step of the way and there's no room. Wait, that's too many letters. It's, it's, comp it, it's 100% calculated okay there it is here's the prediction you have one minute how is a brand created okay how is a brand created does it just happen over time and that's you have no control not no control but it really is just a matter of it happening over time and there's not a lot you can do it's just going to be how it works out or is it 100 percent calculated You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I don't know if anyone wants to use channel points anymore. <clears throat> How is a brand created? Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see how we did. You guys are way, way, way too good. Okay. The outcome is it is 100% calculated. The number one brands in the world don't happen by chance. It doesn't mean that they don't change, they don't evolve, that, that, that 
They don't. They aren't constantly reviewed, but top brands never happen by mistake or just because. It's a continuation of, of calculated adjustments and efforts over time. There isn't anything that you can't risk leaving out, even if you don't think it's important. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example of why it's important to... Like this TikTok video I put out today. Um, so it's coming up on, I can't even see without my glasses. 500 views the day before. Um, the video had, you know, just under 2,000. The day before that, the video had, it's almost 29, or it's just one over 28,000. I'm constantly experimenting in it, and as part of building my brand of what I'm doing in esports and gaming in this community and helping move it to the center stage of world attention and admiration so that everyone, all of us have uh, great opportunities. I've, I've, I test. I didn't put music in this one, this video I put out today. I change hashtags. I change kind of the positioning. I start to get into, you'll notice my videos are starting to kind of on TikTok come into a certain vibe. It's because the efforts bring the results I follow where the results are going and begin to begin to build that into part of my brand. Okay, I'm not without let's get into the details now. Um I branded myself as a photographer about 10 years ago. Uh locally I had a decent fan base. I uh, did work almost every uh week for 2 years. Now see, here's what I'd say Watson. No one brands themselves as a photographer. And I, I, I'll bet you understand this, and it's, it's hard to put it into a small statement like that, but I want to get into this. There are a lot of photographers. A brand, so there are a lot of people that sell motorcycles, a lot of people that sell food, clothing, whatever. But a brand says what makes that element that many people do very unique to you. So you could say, I'm a... Tibetan alpine snow leopard mountain goat specialty photographer. And that's what I do. So, of course, you're a photographer. We're going to expect that you're good, but your brand is that you do a specific kind of work that people can deeply connect to. Um, <laughs> a brand identifies you in a way that separates you from anyone in the competition. And, and mark this down. I'm going to do another. I don't know. Am I doing too many of these? I'm just trying these predictions for, for giggles. Here's another one. Um, how, do, how do I want to question this? Um, what's the most important... Um, What's the most important thing you have? No. Um, what's the most important? How do I want to phrase this question? What is the most important asset? I'll say that because I can't make them really long. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to put this together because these two, these are so time slash money. They're too different, but they really kind of really go together. Or, or your personal brand. One minute. Here we go. What's your most important asset? Integrity is incredibly important. It's, it's amazing how many people don't care about integrity, though. So what is your most important asset? Thirty seconds. Because I want to make this point. Sales worth time, you you can never make more. Ten seconds. 
Wayfarer, I agree. There is. We all have the same amount, exact amount of time. And two, one. All right. Let's choose the prediction. One person says time, money. Oh, you guys, less people are participating. I'm going to make this go away if you guys are getting bored. <laughs> okay. Choose the outcome. It's your personal brand. Here's what I mean. You can't, oh, you can't participate as a mod? Well, that makes sense. Okay. It's not time and money. Money can always be developed if you have the desire to go after it, although it, it's never a good goal to have because it's a never-ending chase. You'll always want more. Time is something in terms of quantity that we all have in common. There's nothing you can do to change it. We all have 24 hours a day, how we spend them, okay? It's a valuable commodity. It's one we can't get back, money can't buy, all of that. 100%. But it's not the most valuable to you in what you want to do in personal branding or branding. You got a question. Shoot, sloppy. As long as it's kind of like in this, <laughs> keep it on topic. What's your question? And then I'll get into my explanation on, on what I was just saying. DMC is coming. No, this is royalty-free music. This is from Epidemic Sound. I pay for this. You heard the doorbell? It's not me. I promise. Okay, that's a great question, but not one we're going to answer right now. <laughs> that's off topic. Um, there's lots of scientific and and behavioral and coaching things, but it's a great question, and I wish you luck on your tournament. Um, so let's talk about this this common element of time slash money versus your brand. The one thing in the world that that biophysically or or you know that that not biophysically the one thing in the world that is completely yours completely is who you are. Who you are. Do you understand that? That is the most single valuable asset that you have. I have people commenting and, and reaching out to me every single day, every single day about I'm not good enough or I'm going to be embarrassed or I don't play this game the way that my friends do so no one would watch me or I'm not going to be able to get this opportunity because I don't have. And here's what's interesting. It's not true not true it's not true i had someone reach out and said my voice doesn't sound i really want to stream but my voice doesn't sound good so i don't use comms i have a squeaky voice you know what's really funny is that there are probably 10 million other people that have squeaky voices that would love and feel very comfortable as they connect with you as a squeaky voice does that make sense there is one of the most famous one of the biggest streamers on twitch right now is the girl that has tourette's she streams and has Tourette's. You know what Tourette's is? It's it's uncontrollable twitches and you know movements and different things. Um, yeah, okay. On the camera and my voice, the biggest fears of streaming. That's what I'm saying. The problem is, and I understand, right? So Wayfair says confidence sells. I'm a very confident human being, balanced endlessly with a recognition of my weaknesses and my strengths. I blow it all the time. I blew it yesterday on stream. I blew it because I let the vibe go down and I didn't mean to, but it seemed like it was I was angry or contentious. I wasn't, but it 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 turned that that's my bad. I blow it all the time. I do stuff like that all the time. But I hope that people can relate to the fact that while it does happen, it's not it's okay 
if you learn from that because it is who you are at that point in time. I'll, I'll be better today. I'll be better from this point on, having learned. Does that make sense? So confidence comes from understanding that there are many that want to connect with you and appreciate and love what you do and have to offer, even if it's not the popular mode of the world. Therein lies the problem. People want to be popular as they value what is currently popular, but popularity ebbs and flows. It used to be popular to have a mullet. It went away for decades. Unfortunately, now it's coming back. Please, no. Striving for popularity is like striving to be always in fashion. It's elusive. It's incredibly elusive. What's not elusive in building your personal brand is revealing more and more and more over time who you are authentically and and, and letting people connect with that. Now, there are bad brands. There are great brands. There are there are people that get attention and try to build a brand on the wrong things. There are people that, and, and I can tell you one thing that I've seen over time. Well, we already talked about this. Let's get into let's get into some of the work. What's important to understand is that your brand is and should be your brand. It should be who you are. Now, it may be similar to someone else, or you may admire or aspire to be to have the qualities of another person um, or the skills, that's okay. But never try to be another person in building your brand because at that moment, you give up your most powerful asset. You're with me? The minute you try to, let me give you an example. I don't remember her name. You know, Steve Jobs was very iconic, right? his round glasses, talking about the later years in his life, his jeans, his black turtleneck, um, his New Balance tennis shoes, that whole kind of look became very iconic. A lot of people started taking on that look, not because they felt it fit their personal brand, but because they wanted to aspire to be the person that led the community of things that they related to and loved. It's the same way if you watch, as an example, um, I love to watch clips of The Voice or America's Got Talent. I love talented people, and I love to see reactions of audiences, judges, as people come out and reveal what talent they have. One of the best compliments they always get is if they have, if they, if they are able to personalize, make a song that they're singing their own. You understand that? It becomes their identity, their interpretation, not, not a, a karaoke version. You'd hear Simon say that all the time. Not a karaoke version of what you think the audience wants to hear because that's the version of the song they're used to hearing. Okay, now, if you guys don't start to grasp the importance of branding and your uniqueness to that brand... You can never ask the question again, how do I grow? How do I get this job? How do I grow in followers? If you don't understand how critical branding is, then leave Street Talk right now and go play games and and do what you want, and that's perfectly fine. But if you want to grow, you have to understand what branding is. Now, here's what I'm going to do for this next uh, little less than an hour, and as we start taking your questions. I'm going to start taking your questions. I'm going to explain my brand. I'm going to explain the three me's. Okay. And I'm going to let you see what I do to continue to try to build that brand. Would that be interesting to you guys? Or should we, should I just take questions? You guys tell me right now I'm waiting. Yes. Okay. That's one yes.
That's it? One yes? Everyone else is too shy. Or we can just take questions. Repeat the question. Do you want me to tell you about my personal brand, why I am developing that brand, and who the three yous are for me? The one I portray, the one you interpret me as, and the real one. Okay. Here's my brand. <clears throat> and I am. I'm going to walk you through every piece of it. I have to give you some background and kind of understand the core. Okay. Let me start with this. The brand I put out there, I recognize... In, in developing a brand, you have to look at what your principles are based on, what you value in your life, and what your end objective is here, okay? It, it's really complex, and it doesn't happen immediately, if that makes sense. It doesn't happen immediately, so let me walk you through it. I grew up, I grew up as a single kid raised by or you know raised by a single mom and um never had a lot of money got um heavily into skating BMX that whole kind of counterculture lifestyle um grew up in southern california you know i've surfed i've i i've done all these things i've wore i've worn vans tennis shoes since i can remember 1970 probably my first pair in like 1974 76 Five, something like that. I've almost always worn Vans. Um, I grew up wearing 501 jeans um, and T-shirts and Vans. That's just what I wore. Um, in my late teenage years, um, I lived in another country for a couple of years. I got married, had six kids. The values in my life say that family's most important, um, that I've been married for 32 years. Fortunately, my wife is still, <laughs> is still with me as crazy as I am. We've raised six kids together. Those core values are what gives me confidence overall. And, and, and even though I grew up in a, in a, in a non-traditional family, I, 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 that is, is just a core of who I am. Okay, here's the other side of who I am. I've been in the counterculture kind of world. I've done the sports and activities that society didn't generally deem valuable. Right. I didn't I played football for a year for a few years because, you know, when I was in high school and, and Pop Warner, because I thought I was going to be in the NFL because I was always a really tall kid when I was young. And then I got into high school and stopped growing at six foot and never weighed more than one hundred and seventy pounds. Um, and so I knew that football wasn't going to be it for me just genetically, even though my dad was six, four. So. All of those elements. The confidence that comes from knowing the core values of my life were good, this counterculture in my kind of approach to things, I'll, I'll be honest, as a, as a pull back the curtain, I spent 25 or 30 years in the corporate world, not in the entrepreneurial world where I should have been my whole life. I started my first business at nine, my second business at 11. I just had always done that because I had to, that's the only way I could make money. The only way is I could have you know things to buy the candy or whatever I wanted. So it's always been that. Now, so you go back and you look at what core things have made you who you are. That's step number one. What do you value? And I'm not talking about what you like at the time. Ooh, now I like Marvel movies, but I used to. I'm not talking about what you like. I'm talking about things that are your are part of your value system makeup. Okay? You look at that. Now, I don't like, I believe in, so I have a fashion, but I'm not fashionable. Like, I wear black shirts or gray shirts and black pants or gray pants with my Vans. I wear a hat. I like hats. I switch to a flat brim hat because to me it is more of the skating, you know, kind of counterculture. I don't I don't do the full, you know, kind of hip hop, leave the stickers on, move it sideways. I don't have a problem with that. That's that's that represents, you know, a style that is in your culture or or something that you value and like. Um, I don't wear, you know, like a, you know, rounded kind of cowboy Texan kind of, you know, and I'm okay with that if you want to. But this to me represents more of the side that I put out that says, yes, um, I have core values 
that everyone can agree on are important in some level. People are important. Family's important. Um, but I'm counterculture, and I'm okay to be that. And I'm not trying to make a statement. It really literally is who I am. I've always fought against, not in the way that I go and, 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 and you know, I'm, I'm going to go protest or different things. I just live the way that, that with the values that I kind of have learned to love and appreciate. The beard. Let's talk about the beard. It's a calculated measure. I'm going to be honest. The beard is a calculated branding measure. Because when you see me for the first time, think about the whole package, and this is what I think about. First of all, I'm 57. I have this long beard that's like not many, not many men grow long beards in our society right now, even though it was trendy amongst you know hipsters and millennials for a bit. Um, I wear this hat. I love gaming. I'm this, I'm this guy with, that has core values that people can respect, if, whether you agree or disagree with them. I'm someone that at my age loves gaming and sees the opportunities for everyone, unlike most people my age you know, that hate gaming and don't give it any due respect. So all of these things are a representation of a message that I want to portray. So I am very thoughtful. I, now I'm getting, you know, people are sending me hats. Um, I, will, I wear them all the time. My clothes are very simple. I have like seven or eight pairs of Vans. I wear stance socks. All things that that are part of who I am. I'm not chasing someone else's identity. I just started to pick things that represented my identity, things that I have really have come to shape me, and that's what's very important. Okay, now let's move to the kind of next phase of it: the work that it takes. When you create a brand, it's a it's a process. All of these things that I've looked at, I've tested. How do I feel when I do when I do a video and I don't wear a hat? Do I feel that having my hair long or short represents who I am? Do I like I like wearing these pants that I wear because they're gray and black, gray or black and they're stretchy and they're super comfortable and they're they're kind of a of a of a modernish style without being fashionable. It it's 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 very it's I've always, I just like going into my closet and picking one, co- you know, one of two colors of pairs of pants and one of two colors of shirts or kinds of shirts. But the whole package is an evolution. Now, my wife doesn't like the beard. I like the beard, but I also recognize that it's going to become very iconic as part of my brand because if I walk in somewhere and you see this, this person from a distance that has this long, you know, gray and black beard, wears a hat, you know, is always in black or gray shirts, black or gray pants. It's going to be recognizable. It's going to be recognizable. If you have seen me somewhere, even if you can't maybe place it, hey, who is that guy? Does that make sense? That now evolves into a brand. A brand is a way to, number one, portray the message you want the world to see and number two, to demonstrate or to give people an attachment. Now, let's shift to my brand and what I'm doing. I'm not sure if that's a clear explanation. Let's shift from my personal brand and the effort that I put into it because everything is calculated. Let me, let me even before my personal brand on camera. The way that I decorated this facility becomes a brand. The way that I have my, my, my stream station set up becomes part of my brand. The fact that I have four Iron Man characters in my gaming PC behind the glass becomes part of the brand. Your brand becomes things that are elemental representations of what has made you as a person and uniquely you. The problem is I'm not chasing, I'm not trying to look like Steve Jobs or Dr. Disrespect or Joe Schmo or whatever. I'm not trying to be anyone other than what works for me. Now, Here's the hard part. Let's say that you do that. You put all that out there. This is who I am. I like to, you know, um, wear these kind of clothes, and 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 this is the way I like the. I like to wear these glasses, and not everything is a pers- is a persona, right? It can be you. Here's the problem. You have to over time 
make sure as it evolves that you keep it true to who you are as best you can without feeling like you need to make a change because the market or the audience or other people tell you you should be different. The minute you do that or try to mimic someone else because you see that they've succeeded at it, you lose your most valuable asset, which is your uniqueness, okay? But here's the problem. Other people, I I get these messages, other people would come in and see me on stream, in a game, somewhere, and many times will have a very different impression of who I am, okay? An interpretation, especially at my age. Hey, you need to grow up, start wearing kid skater shoes. Hey, you need to, um, you know, shave that beard because men your age in business should be clean cut and respectable. Hey, you should, you know, there's this whole get away from video game. I mean, all the things. The important thing is this is where I'm at. This is how I feel. And I've said this before, and this is very important as you build a brand. Your opinion of me personally is none of my business. How you respond to the brand that I'm building is all of my business. And I'm not asking you to tell me. I'll know. I'll know. If my efforts to grow in whatever capacity I want to grow in, streamer, player, coach, broadcaster, video producer, photographer, whatever, are growing, number one, you have to have the skill set. Let's just know that, and that takes time to develop as well. But let's assume you have the skill in whatever you want to do. You have to continue, whether or not you approve means nothing to me. How it affects the growth of what I want to do means everything. I I, I every day read and, and respond to almost every message that comes to me. It's getting harder and harder to do. And, but it's important. That's what's critical. I don't care about likes and follows. I care about why what the trends are, what did I do in building my brand that helped foster that growth in that way? So my control is this is what I'm putting out and I hope you see. This is what you see and view it as what your priorities are. You may say to yourself, large families overpopulate the earth and you're a loser for having six kids with your wife. I've had people tell me that. I, I'm not gonna lie. I had I was at a I was at a Costco one time when my kids were all young with my wife, and we were pushing a flat and a cart, and all six of our kids were there. I had a woman push her cart up next to me, coming the opposite direction, and look me in the eyes, look at my family, look back at me, and say, "Haven't you ever heard of birth control?" <laughs> I didn't even know what to say. But that's the reality. That the perception, the value that I have for family is not the value that, that she obviously has for family in the sense of a large family. That's okay. I I didn't change. I didn't say, wow, yeah, maybe I should I should like give three of my kids up for adoption. So haven't you ever heard of makeup? You want me to wear makeup evil? <laughs> so The point is, understand that you're not trying to please with the brand you're putting out there and the people's interpretation of it as you build this in a calculated way. Please, 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 please understand you're never going to make everyone happy. You're never going to win the approval or the recognition or the money or the attention from everyone. No one does. No one does. No one does. And yet you'll spend, oftentimes I talk with people all the time, you'll spend massive amounts of time, massive amounts of time trying to get everyone's attention and being incredibly concerned as to why you lose some other. Who cares? I'm telling you that there's an audience for you and what you do if the brand that you build in a calculated way is authentic to who you're, you know, you want people to see you as. Because when I said the the first part of it is who you portray and the things you wear, the things you do, whatever, 
how the world interprets it, but, but in the middle, down low, is who you really are. The, and that's the one that's lasting and most compelling and the one that makes connection with people. The more, understand, the more that you deviate in your first attempt to grow that brand away from who you really are means that the people, whatever they interpret it as, will have a harder time finding who you really are and connecting with that. That's why the, the, the first and the third are so important. Okay, they're all important in this. Oh, to the lady who said it. <laughs> I don't even remember what she, I remember she, I, I was, I was so shocked. I was so shocked by what she said. I, I couldn't even, I, anyway. Authenticity is often thrown around now as this cliche and it's, it's of, you know, be authentic and, and, and it's really hard. It's really hard to be authentic. I know that I like wearing stance socks, van shoes, gra gray, or black and gray clothes. I have one style of pants in two colors. I have like two or three styles of shirts in two colors, and they're all basically the same. Um, I like wearing flat brim hats. I like having my beard. Um, I'm not bougie. I don't, I don't care about money and things and all that stuff. I mean, I'm past all of that in my life. I, don't get me wrong. I don't care about bougie things to spend money on. I want to be financially secure, and I want you to be. And I want the things that I do to be represented in that brand. Authenticity goes much deeper. Authenticity goes into the actual, you being confident in the reasons behind what you're doing and why you're doing it. People that are part of the Street Talk Leader Nation understand that we're all as part of a community, not talking about Delta V Esports, that is has the intention and, and the, the objective to move gaming from where it is now to the center stage of world attention and admiration, which is where it will be. That's something we can all get behind. It's big, it's authentic, it's audacious, um, because we will be, this will be the biggest industry in the world and most admired industry in the world. So whatever you say, I want to be a streamer that connects with people. I want to be a photographer that people, you know, want to use over and over and over again. I want to be the best account and I want to be the best whatever. You have to build a brand that's authentic. Too many times, I grew up in the world of dress for success and power ties and Rolex watches and what shoes are you wearing. Like Everything had to fit a certain model so that when I walked into a meeting, well, that guy's got a you know $8,000 watch on. He's got you know a $2,000 suit, an $800 pair of shoes. You know, I mean, this guy is all about success because there were preconceived expectations of what that really looks like. What's happened in our world now when it comes to branding is that these preconceived notions are all over the map. No one cares anymore. The world of prepackaged, you need to be this, and that is gone. What you need to be and what the world craves and your audience or your employer or your industry craves is who you really are. I'm not saying completely. I'm not saying that there aren't people that still you know, do that, but, but this is getting wiped out and decimated all the time, if that makes sense. So you have to, this authenticity is the foundation for you calculating how you're going to build your brand. If you absolutely, 100% hate Battle Royale games, but you want to be a content creator for a person who does battle royale games and you want to make amazing video clips and whatnot, you're going to have a hard time because it's not authentic. On the other hand, if you say, man, I love MMOs and I'm going to live in that world, that's an authentic because it's not in contradiction. You're not selling yourself to do something that isn't deeply embedded to something that you love. I don't want to get philosophical about this, but everything is calculated. Okay, let's get into some more of the very specifics. The corporate world's always been toxic, and it's and it's it's so turned upside down right now, and I'm so excited for that. But let's get into some of the more nuts and bolts. My brand, I think every day, what hat do I wear? How does it, you know, do I wear my glasses? What kind of glasses? You know, what shirt? Where's my lighting? Where's all these, you know, like, what do I want in my brand um, physical thickness. Wait a second. 
six months in advance of a tier one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me let me make a let me say something here if I can, if I if I read that right, physical thickness. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Do you see what just happened? So physical thickness thickness is new. Can I can I can I just say thickness or th- <laughs> I already I already got the name wrong right from the very beginning. I said psychic thickness. I'm so sorry. In some way, my brand, what I'm saying in an authentic way is you kind of get to know someone on that level more deeply is resonating with this person. And I love that because I value outside of the money that this person just spent to be a part of this community or support these efforts. I recognize that that per, this person found value. Um, and that's what I pay attention to. Not the amount of money. It's incredibly appreciated because that's how we're going to support everything we're doing. You guys all know that. We're all working. And don't ever say that you don't do things for money because if you do, most of the time you're lying. We all have the bills to pay and all. But that's not the point is that I made a connection. And now there'll be a brand recognition that goes along with it. You guys understand this is this is what I'm talking about in live action. Tomorrow we're going to talk about live streaming. Um, so the point I'm making here is that when you calculate every aspect, you can't leave anything to chance. I literally, before I get on camera or when I get up in the morning, I think, how am I going to groom my beard Do I need to, you know, how is it looking in the sense of I want to make sure that it's represented as a clean, certain style of beard? What hat am I going to wear? How's it going to, uh, you know, what, what, how's it going to match with what I've got? Um, How am I going to behave? What did I learn from the day before? What's, what's happening on my, my social, what things, everything is calculated. Here's another example. If I said, you know, so Tang, our stream director, is encouraging me to get back on LinkedIn. I've been off of LinkedIn for a long time. It's a calculated assessment. I now need to consider the pros and cons of how it affects my brand. Does the brand that I'm putting out there, the the, the me that, that I put out, or the you that I put out, you know, the three U's, does it work? I calculate everything. I calculate did I really need to spend four hundred dollars on a um, a Sure mic? Did I really need to spend six hundred dollars on a Go XLR? What does it represent in my brand? Well, part of my brand is that I don't enjoy fancy, but I do enjoy quality, and quality meaning value, right? Quality balanced by like, for example, I would I would never buy a Lexus, even though I think they make the best cars on the planet, because the value is outweighed. The, the price outweighs the value for me and and the and what it represents doesn't fit my brand. You know what fits my brand? Next year when I can save up the money, I'll go buy a Triumph Bonneville Bobber Black motorcycle and it's not very expensive and it and I love motorcycles and it fits my brand. I think of it represents the style of motorcycle that I want to have because it fits my brand. And when people see me pull up on it, it fits what I'm trying to do. Could I say, do I think that 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 a Ferrari Enzo, an Enzo Ferrari is an amazing car or a Bugatti or these are amazing cars? Um, what's up, Waldemont? I do. I think they're amazing. Would it be fun to rent one sometime and go? Yes, but it doesn't fit my brand. I wouldn't buy it. Even if I had all the money in the world, it just doesn't fit my because I'm trying, I want to be authentic to you to the movement to what we're doing. And sometimes authenticity comes down to, this is why it's important not to chase money because it's always elusive, but to chase a vision of what you want to achieve and put that to people. Because people, if you're sincere about it, if you're authentic in who you are and the brand that you're building and putting out and you calculate all the things around that reinforce that brand, people will jump out of the woodworks to want to support you because they get value of that experience as well. And then all of a sudden, you go from recognition to identity. There will be people over time that will say, "Oh, I watch Street Taco Eater and and I watch and, and you know, like I I I see the stuff in the Street Taco Eater nation. They'll go from that to I am Sten." If that makes sense. If you understand what I'm saying. 
So building a personal brand is the most important thing that you can do in any of your efforts to grow in this industry, period, flat out. It has to be authentic as you understand the three U's, the you you build to put out as your brand, the you that it's interpreted as, and then the authentic, the real you down here somewhere that people can connect to in a lasting way and then begin to self-identify. And that is all done in an incredibly calculated, ever-evolving way. Look at every single thing. Why did I choose Secret Labs chairs? It was calculated. Why do I choose, you know, this, whatever you call these things, thermal bottles or whatever, and why did I put, you know, the logo, the Delta V logo on there? Why do I use an iPhone versus a Galaxy? It's all calculated because it represents, it's a piece of representing who I am authentically. And you have to do that. That's what building a brand is. If you think you can just show up and ramble or just do whatever, you'll have a harder time. And if you don't think that, you think that some people that are the most, that, that care, that seem to care the least about their brand, you're wrong. If they're very successful, they care, but there are some people's brands that are incredibly simple and you don't, you think that that's just, well, they're just being who they, no, it's all calculated. They think about everything. Okay. I hope that that makes sense. What I want to do now for the last 25 minutes is open it up to you guys for questions. So what questions do you have? Um, what questions do you have about building a personal brand? And while you're doing that, let me use the restroom really quick, and I'll be right back. Don't let anyone leave. You know, by the way, okay, so before Slug asks question, before I read this question, by the way, everything, even the things I do in my channel points is part of my brand. You, you understand that? It's so calculated. The fact that I have a barbell, a kettlebell, these things, it's because I have a deep passion um, and a love for doing CrossFit. And these are CrossFit kinds of movements that I can actually do in here. So I put them in my channel points. That's part of my brand. The fact that I have a steering wheel, a Logitech steering wheel and pedals, over here that you can see on screen is part of my brand. I love cars, I love driving, I love driving games. It's all calculated, do you understand? It all is ways, how can I continue to best represent and identify myself and separate myself from other people that is unique to me? I like beards, my wife doesn't. I'm probably gonna shave it in a year, we'll see, <laughs> right? Okay, 
Let's say you've tried before, but you need to start over. What advice would you give to someone looking to recreate, but possibly show others their individual growth um, from who they were? Easy. Just do it. Here, here's what I would say. There's no such thing as I blew it. I have a, you know, whatever. And now I'm, a, you know, you can always, if someone recognizes you by work you've done before as a certain brand, it can be changed. It's just going to take longer than doing it originally. But that's okay. It, does, it doesn't matter. Because all brands evolve. Coca-Cola, the best known brand in the world, globally. The, the most known brand in the world, globally. You understand what I'm saying? Has changed its logo style many times. Has changed its tagline many times. Has evolved. So to answer your question... The biggest key here, the biggest key here is to sit down. I'm going to be doing, I'm working out, guys, and you'll have to give me some feedback. I, you know, I was going to do my stream record. I actually think I'm going to do something like, just to give you an idea, to help with this. I'll talk, I may talk about this this week. I'm going to do something like, for 100 bucks, I'm going to spend a month in your, with helping you in your stream. I'm going to go through, I helping, there's a, I'm going to have a whole like questionnaire, you know, I'm going to understand who you are, what, what, you know, what you want to do. I'm going to help essentially lay out a brand strategy and then kind of assess the progress for a month for a hundred bucks to answer a lot of these questions, but me personally to be involved. I, there's a reason I want to do it and maybe I'm going to do it that way. I talked about doing a course for more money, but I think something like me saying, I want to, I'm going to lay out a plan and that's probably way too cheap as I think about it, but I want to test and see. So you guys have to let me know if it's something you think makes sense. Okay. Uh, I'm in a corporate job and viewed as the young guy that doesn't know the market. Side note, I started at the bottom with another company and worked up, uh, changed to this corporate job and work with people who have never put in the work and they think they know it all. How do you overcome the pushback? <laughs> Oh man, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> you're asking the wrong person. Um, 17 or 716 shooter. Uh, what's up? Watch this. Um, Patriots Way, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Street Talk Leader Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. <laughs> That's the recorded. I'm trying to get away from how interruptive it gets in the game. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, this is deeply philosophical, and I'm the wrong person to ask. Many years over my life, I mean, I looked a great corporate position, I, you know, and, and I was asked, I've been asked several times to run for political office. Nothing ever big, nothing ever big. But, um, you know, it's it was more, you know, city council or state congress or something like that. You, should, you ever consider it? And I always said no because I don't play the game. I never fit in the corporate world of big companies because I don't play the political game. I, if In a situation like this, I would challenge them with no hesitation, even if it meant my job. But I would challenge them logically. And this is what's you have to, guys, you can't pretend to be something in your personal brand development that is not authentic. Well, okay, we talk about that doesn't have reasoning behind it. If someone comes to me, a parent comes to me and says, gaming is a waste of time, you're corrupting youth, you're, you're leading them down a path of, of, of unreasonable expectations, I would, say, I would say you're wrong. Now, if I left it at that, that's just an opinion. But people have come to understand that my personal brand is backed by quantifiable, measurable, significant volumes of data. I don't make a statement unless I have Evidence, data, and experience to back it up. But when I do have it, I will make a very calculated statement and a very strong and bold and confident statement. However, if I don't and I see that someone has a better position, then I become inquisitive. And so oftentimes in a situation like this, people that think they know more and what you should or shouldn't do without really having the the, the wherewithal behind it. It's just posturing. It's just beating their chest. Hey, young punk kid, what could you possibly know? That's insecurity. I get challenged all the time by people much younger than me. 
And and sometimes their point is very valid, and I take it and say that it's my own, that I created it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't do that. I kind of do, but I don't. I always give credit. Tang, my stream director, calls me out on different things all the time. He's a young man. His birthday was yesterday. I think he turned 25 or 6. Um, sometimes he has valid points. Other times he does it, and I disagree and say no. And so it's not even about age. It's about, in a situation like you're talking about, Wayfair, oftentimes it's, it's posturing. It's people that, that feel threatened, older people that feel threatened by younger generations that companies often look to in their brand. I'm telling you, that plays a role in it. The people that, that companies hire plays into their brand and culture because culture is a big part of your brand. Um my answer to that is stand up with data and confidence, but don't be confrontational. You can say, hey, you know, I, I understand your point, but let me let me explain. You know, I had someone call me out on, on a video that I did um, that that said, well, what's this guy's resume in esports? What the he-? Sorry, I can't curse. What, what is that question and what does it really even have to do with the the content that I'm producing. If I told you the connections and expertise and experience I have, even though I've never sat on a competitive esports stage, it would you'd, you'd, you'd feel kind of dumb that you even asked a question like that. If you talked about the experience that I bring and the, and the general principles that apply in life and business to esports and gaming, you wouldn't even ask a question like that, um, if that makes sense. Um, thank you. I take that with heart helps more than, you know, I hope, I hope so, man. You know, it's, you know, people that are young and this is, this is part of the position I have. Part of my brand too, is that, look, I'm old enough and have done more than most people around me that want to, that are in this industry have done. What are you going to tell me about, you know, success in life? I have a wonderful marriage. I have a wonderful family. I have, I'm confident in who I am and my place in the world. What are you going to tell me at age 30? That's going to, that's going to derail me from that. <laughs> There's nothing. So my brand comes with not only the physical side, but but a contextual side that says, hey, this guy's actually a little bit deeper than just what shows on the surface of wanting likes and follows and subscriptions. I hope that what you begin to see is that two things. I'm well-informed. I'm constantly studying, constantly evaluating, constantly reverse engineering, because my ultimate motive is to clear a path for you and the gaming and esports industry and the role that I can play to bring it to the center stage of world attention and admiration. And with that, all of the opportunities that come along financially, emotionally, socially, and all of that to you, that's my role. And I'm, I am passionate and committed to that. And that's my brand. The fact that I like to have a beard is part of it. The fact that I use an iPhone, the fact that I have CrossFit stuff, the fact that I I, I, I use it. It's all part of it. But understand, it's all calculated. And it's all tested. Tested. Now, if everyone, if everyone in, in my brand 10 years now said, I hate Vans, you shouldn't wear them, I'm, I'm going to keep wearing them. It's just because it's who I am. But if you said, you know, if someone said, hey, um, you shouldn't support Secret Labs as a company because their founder and CEO is a criminal or whatever, I'd probably listen and make a change. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's a calculation of me saying, do I want to support and represent something or someone? You understand? Like, I don't use American Apparel um, shirt. I don't use that company for my shirts, for my merch. I haven't looked at them in several years, but there was a time when there were so many sexual harassment lawsuits on the founder and CEO. And it was, it was, a, it was, I didn't like their advertising. I didn't like what they represented and it didn't fit my brand. I look at all of that. Everything that I put out in front of an audience is part of my brand and it's calculated and you have to treat it the same way. It's the only way that successful brands grow from, you know, from obscurity to recognition to identity. And you need to do that as a member of a, of a company, as an employee, as a, as a, as a contractor, as anyone in this industry, you've got to understand how critical brand is for the next 20 years. It is the most important thing. What happened? You just finished class. <laughs> What's happening? Okay. Questions, guys. We got about 13 minutes, 12 minutes.
Personal branding questions. <laughs> you have to go back and watch the video tomorrow morning. It's about building your personal brand. I'm not going to repeat an hour and 48 minutes. It's about building your personal brand. It'll be available on, on my YouTube channel. What other questions, guys, about building a personal brand and how it affects the growth of anything you want to do in esports? I think tomorrow, I have to look at what I had. A lot of times I come up with the night before based on the on, on the day's experience, what I'm going to talk about. What I kind of I want to get into this week is is live streaming and its impact, but that's going to be probably a two or three show. Uh, episode kind of presentation. Personal brand, guys. Agree, disagree, the three U's. The TikTok video I put out this morning. Am I tired? I'm not tired at all. I don't get tired when I'm with you guys. I get tired at three in the morning when I finally pass out because I can't read anymore. <laughs> what else, guys? You want me to do push-ups? I'll do push-ups. There you go. Uh, should I link as many social accounts to my gaming account, uh, if that makes sense? What's up, Filthy? Um, yes and no. You know, the, the general school of thought when it comes to marketing yourself, that's not brand. That's using a platform or a tool to expand awareness of your brand. You understand the difference? A social media platform is not where you build a brand or how you build a brand. It's how you build awareness to the brand you're creating. There's a difference. Social media platforms will come and go. Vine was a thing. AOL was a thing. Connection, you know, there's community. They'll come and go. TikTok right now is hot, but it won't be in two or three years. Something else will be. You understand what I'm saying? So don't make, a, don't make a love affair connection with a social media platform outside of the fact that it is simply a tool. Now, should you connect all social media platforms? It was fun, Filthy. Should you, should, you, should you connect all social media platforms to your accounts? The answer is yes and no. Yes, if you can create content that is relevant and contextual, golly, I hate this song. This is the weirdest song. I feel like I'm watching some broken episode of the 1950s Lost in Space. I'm trying, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yes, connect things that make sense and that you can keep up with. Af, you can look it up. I'm not going to tell you my... You can look it up. It's not relevant to the conversation. So, um, if I think TikTok, absolutely. I think people are missing the boat if they're not putting content out on TikTok because the organic reach and growth opportunity is so big. You know, when, when Tang is telling me I should get back into TikTok because of the things there, I'm going to evaluate it. I haven't been doing it. My order, for example, right now is, let, let's just talk about that for a second. So, TikTok number one platform for me, growing exposure to my brand and the movement and the things that we're doing. That's number one. Number two is probably Twitter because I'm putting more and more stuff out. Number three would maybe be, you know, Instagram. Um, and it kind of stops there outside of my Twitch channel. Um, I should be writing subreddits. Um, I should take this content. Um, oh, YouTube is obviously another one because I'm, I don't do a lot of editing work because I don't have the time. I end up clipping these shows off and putting them out there. Um, so there's things like Reddit, there's things like 
um, Spotify for, you know, I need to strip the audio out of all of this and create podcasts, you know, Spotify and, and SoundCloud and all of that. Um, it makes sense to get, hi, can I help you? So you'll have to go around to the front of the building. Um, so there are so many platforms that we overlook that could be incredibly valuable and relevant to your brand. Like Facebook doesn't fit my brand. Is it a great tool? Yeah. It just doesn't fit my brand of what I want to do. LinkedIn possibly does, and so I'll reevaluate it. Twitter does. Um, TikTok does. Reddit should. I should spend more time on Reddit. YouTube does. So I prioritize and evaluate them, not in how it helps my brand, but how it helps gain exposure for and awareness of my brand, if that makes sense. Great question. So so, so pick, right? Don't be, be careful about just feeling like you need to just put everything out. If you want to put content out on every platform for six months every day and just see what kind of is, is getting momentum and working for you, you can absolutely do that. I've done that. So that's why I kind of, I kind of pick and choose a little more now. But again, awareness, good or bad, is not is is beneficial, right? No news is you know. I mean, bad news is is news. Good news is news. You know, bad attention is attention. Good attention is attention. Because think about too in your brand, all the people that don't like your brand or may come out and trash you, it brings attention. And there'll be just as many people. Well, there'll be ten times more people that 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 say, well, what? Who is this guy? This person that that everyone's trashing on or talking about that want to see. And then, you know, may decide, wow, I really actually like this person. You understand what I'm saying? So test it. That's really, that's really my point. Test it. Um, all right. We got about five minutes left. I don't know what that means, Al. I don't know if this is you or your brother, by the way. I'm watching you carefully right now. So you don't get banned. Don't let your brother have the phone. Um, okay. Anything else, guys, on this subject? I'm happy to talk. If you got another question, other questions. Um, because otherwise, we'll get ready for it. We are playing some more Cold War today. I did break down and get it. And we played a lot of zombies. Um, Good. Good. I'm glad it helps. So this video will be posted. Um, I try to do it every night to get it up on YouTube. I don't really edit it. I just cut it off front to start, and that's kind of just what I do. So I don't put a lot of work into it yet until we have an editor. We do have some new branding coming for everything. Um, I will put out there. I don't play either, so I don't know, Af. But not a question relevant to what we're talking about. Um, I don't play on console. I play on PC. Um, so I do want you to think about if you do me a favor. Do you feel like if if I were to put essentially a branding program that was personally built to your stream and spent a month kind of evaluating how you're progressing in the work and sharing information, you know, and whatnot, and I charged a hundred bucks for that? You don't have to answer right now. I just want you to think. I think it's way too cheap. I'm, I may have to reassess that. But maybe for the month of December, if I took on, I don't even know, 25 people, whatever. Um, or if I do something different. Let me know if that would be, um, that's way too cheap. I kind of agree. <laughs> I, I guess what I really should say what I really should say is, would it be of value for me to spend the month of December and getting you ready for 2021 by assessing where your stream is, where I see your brand, and creating a unique pathway that's a template for you to move forward or start 2021? It is a lot of hours. What's up, Toby? Let me know if you feel like that would be something beneficial. You can either DM me and let me know, um, you know, or, yeah, I think 100 bucks is way too, I actually do think that's really cheap. 
<laughs> um, I tend to be, anyway, on that end. Derpy Taco. Thank you for the follow. Ready for this? Welcome to the Street Taco Eater Nation. You're in the right place at the right time because we're doing the right thing. <laughs> I know I don't have to say it. Uh, uh. All right, guys. Um, listen, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. You guys rock. I hope this was helpful today. Um, spread the word about Street Talk. Spread the word that people can go watch all of this stuff for free uh, on YouTube. And um, keep coming back. We're going to continue to have um, these discussions going on for as long as they're valuable. Um, and I mean, this class is 12, so I thought I'd just hop on. I appreciate, I appreciate that, Toby. I'm glad you did, man. Um, 25 would be spreading yourself too thin. Um, yes and no. It would be if I don't make it financially worth it. I'm already, I'm already a workaholic, but you're right, Mrs. I do have to be careful. I just want to make sure there's always a great value there. So I uh, appreciate that, Jack. All right, guys, we're going to get into, I'm going to close out this session. I'm going to change screens. That's how I'll know at the end of this. So if I go back 